Hey everyone, Mark here. Today I'm going to be covering flight planning for beginners looking to fly to fly by wire A320 using SimBrief to generate an easy to use flight plan that you can reproduce in your first flights in Flight Sim. Today I'll be covering the happy path when everything goes smoothly inputting the flight plan and in a subsequent video I'm going to cover all the different edge cases that you might run into when preparing for your flight. Just like in previous videos in this series, I'm going to be focused on giving you just the bare minimum information you need to make a successful flight with the Fly-By-Wire A320, rather than go over all of the details that you don't necessarily need when you're just getting started. Alright, there is lots of ground to cover here, so let's get going. Usually I start one of these videos at the world map and I do all of my flight planning from there for the general aviation airplanes. But when it comes to flying airliners, it's a lot easier to use SimBrief. It's going to generate a much more detailed flight plan that's going to give us a bunch of information that the plane's going to need to fly properly. In case you are curious though, I did try and create a flight from the world map. But when I booted into the sim, the flight plan didn't follow through into the cockpit. So SimBrief is going to be the better and faster option for you. You'll need to create a free account. And once you've done that, you can head over to the Fly-By-Wire website and you're going to want to import the airframe link that's right here. That's going to tell SimBrief the right weights and configuration settings to use when you're trying to generate a flight for the airplane. Once it's been successfully imported, what you can do is go into the dispatch system and go create a new flight. For your first flights, my suggestion is to use a route that's around 100 to 150 nautical miles, and that should take you a little bit under an hour to complete. Like that, you can get in as much practice as possible in all phases of flight without having to spend too much time at cruise altitudes. I found for my first flights with the A320 that it was a lot easier to just redo the same route over and over until I had a pretty good handle on all of the different phases of flight. The flight I ended up with is a nice short hop from Ontario in Southern California down to San Diego. The first thing you need to do when you're filling out one of these flight plans is to obviously enter the departure and arrival airports. You need to find the airport codes for these on Google if you don't know them by heart, or you can get them out of flight sim as well. Once you've entered in the airport codes, you're going to see it's going to choose a route automatically for you. And you can also see the distance between the two airports right at the bottom as well. In this case, it's just a tad over 100 nautical miles, which is exactly what I'm looking for. For the route, I strongly recommend that you pick a route that has both a departure procedure and an arrival procedure listed. They're easy to spot in the flight plan because they're going to be at either end of it, and you're going to notice that they always start with a sequence of letters followed by a number. In this case, I'm flying the Raji 3 departure procedure and the Barrett 5 arrival. The reason I say to use a route that has both a departure and an arrival listed is that it's going to make it a lot easier to program into the MCDU. Otherwise, you're going to end up in a situation where you have to figure some stuff out yourself. For example, if you try to use this route instead, it's going to be a lot more complicated. And I'm going to look at how to do that in a separate video. Most of the rest of the information on here gets filled out automatically. And for getting started, you can really just use all of the defaults. The only other thing to make sure of is that the airframe, you've selected the fly-by-wire A32NX that you just imported a few minutes ago. Now you might notice at the bottom that it says that we're using an out-of-date ARAC cycle, which basically means that the navigation database isn't as current as it could be. Flight Sim also has an ARAC cycle, so it's easy to end up with mismatches between them and end up with some waypoints that exist in one but not the other. With a Navigraph subscription, you can update the ARAC data both in Flight Sim and on SimBrief so that they match, but that's a fairly expensive option if you're just getting started, and I only really recommend it if you think you're going to go all in on airliners and you want to fly on BatSim. All right, with all those details sorted, the last thing for me to do is to obviously hit save, and you also have to hit the Generate Flight button. If you don't click the Generate Flight Plan button, when you go into Flight Sim, you won't actually be able to import what we've created here. With that done, the flight plan is now available for me to import in Flight Sim, and I've got a nice little summary here of everything we need to program into the MCDU. So let's switch over to Flight Sim now and have a look at how to do that. Before I move on to how to program the MCDU, I do want to remind you, if you get some value from this video, please make sure to hit the like button. And if you'd like to get more content like this, make sure to hit subscribe as well. I publish a new video every two weeks with tips, tricks, and tutorials for newcomers to the world of Flight Sim. Like I was saying, I'm at the point where I'm ready to start programming the MCDU or McDo. I've heard it pronounced both ways, so you can call it however you want. 
and we're going to give it all of the information it needs to manage the flight that we're going to be doing today. If you're not sure how to start up the airplane, you can check out the previous video, which is a really short one, which explains how to bring the airplane to life. The way you use the menus on here is very similar to how it works in the G1000 in general aviation airplanes. All you do is you press the button that's aligned with the option that you want to choose. This area of the screen is what's called the scratch pad, and it's where you're going to get messages back from the MCDU when it needs to tell you something. And it's also where you're going to see values appear when you punch them in. So I don't really have to do anything for this one. And all I'm going to do to just erase the message is press the clear button. Before we can import our flight plan from Simbrief, we're going to actually have to do a little bit of setup in the EFB. So let's head over there right now and go into settings and then go into Atsu AOC. You're going to see there's an entry right here called Simbrief username pilot ID. You have to get this from the Simbrief website. So if you go into one of your flight plans, then you click on my account and then there's a Simbrief data button. And on that screen that's going to appear, there'll be your pilot ID. Now that that's configured, we can go back to the MCDU and we can import the flight plan that we generated a few seconds ago. To do that, we're going to go into the ATSU menu and then we're going to go into the AOC menu, which is where you would have all of the different ways that you can communicate with Simbrief to get information from it. From here to import the flight plan, I'm going to go into init press right at the top and I'm going to press the init data request button. This is what's communicating out to Simbrief and it's importing the information of the flight plan into the MCDU right now. I can see that my departure and destination is right, so I can keep going. If nothing shows up when you press the init data request, make sure that your Simbrief config is right in the EFB. Use either your pilot ID and if that doesn't work, try your username. And if that's all okay and you're still not seeing anything, you probably just forgot to press the generate flight button on your flight plan. Now, even though it's imported a lot of the information of our flight plan for us, there's still a fair bit of information that we need to complete ourselves. We're going to do that in just one second. Before that, what I like to do is go back to DEFB, go to the homepage DEFB and click the load from Simbrief button here as well so that all of the flight info is in the EFB as well. With that done, I'm going to go back to the MCDU and we're going to go up again to the AOC menu. And before we go continue with loading up the flight plan, I'm actually going to go into weight and balance. And I'm going to send a request to Simbrief to get all of the information for how many passengers we're going to have and how much payload we're going to have. Once the information comes back, I can start the boarding process here by just pressing start. I like to do this now because by the time the boarding's completed, I'll be ready to push back because I'll probably have finished loading up the MCDU as well. All right, let's continue with the next step and that's going to the init page of the MCDU. You can see here, I've got a bunch of blank spots here. So if I just press the init request, this is again gonna go out to Simbrief and load up all of our initial data for our flight. And with that done, I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is going into build the flight plan. You can see it imported a bunch of the waypoints of our flight for us, but there's still a few things that we need to do specifically for the departure and destination. One neat thing that you can do if you zoom out just a little bit, you can set the multifunction display to plan mode and increase the range to maybe about 40 nautical miles. And you can actually see your route here from the airport all the way down to your destination. So I like to zoom out just a little bit like this. And this will make it a little bit easier for me to see the route visually rather than just looking at the waypoints on the screen. To scroll through the waypoints, this is one thing that I actually found a little bit weird when I got started, is the arrow keys seem to work opposite what you might think. So you have to press the up key to go down and the down key to go back up towards your departure. All right, so I am back at the start of my flight plan and I'm going to just click on my departure airport right here and I'm going to choose my departure options and I'm going to choose the 26 right runway, which is what's written on my flight plan in Simbrief. And finally, I have to choose the standard instrument departure or SID. This is why in the Simbrief section, I was saying that we should definitely always choose one that has departure because it's going to make this part a little bit easier. In my case, I know that I'm flying the Raji 3 departure because that's what's on my Simbrief plan. So I just click on that one. You can really only pick the right transition if you compare the chart to where your flight plan is going and you figure out something that makes sense. However, what I would say when you're just getting started, 
you don't need to worry about the transition. You can just not pick one right here and just click the insert button. And now we can see that it's actually loaded up all of my different waypoints here that I need for the departure. There is one weird thing about the flight plan though, and if I scroll down just one more notch, you can see it. I have the Reggie waypoint there twice, and there's something in the middle between the two called a flight plan discontinuity. A discontinuity is really just a way for the MCDU to tell you that it doesn't know what it should do once it goes past the previous waypoint and you need to make a decision about it. In this case, it's a pretty easy fix because I've got the Reggie waypoint there twice. So I'm going to start by removing the duplicate by pressing the clear button first and then clicking the waypoint that I want to remove, which is this duplicate Reggie right here. Now I got to try and get rid of the flight plan discontinuity. And the easiest way, and most often this is going to work, is to just press the clear button and just press the F plan discontinuity one, which is this one right here. And you can see in this case, it actually worked. The discontinuity is gone. There are some situations where trying to clear the discontinuity isn't going to work, and I'm going to cover that in a separate video. All right, let's do the same thing for the destination airport. So I'm going to scroll down here just a little bit more. You see we have another flight plan discontinuity there, but we'll leave it for right now. I've got my destination airport right here, so I'm just going to click on it, and then I'm going to choose arrival. And before it gives us an arrival choice, we actually have to choose which approach we're going to use. The easiest way to land the A320 is with an ILS approach, and even though Simbrief told me to use runway 27, I'm actually going to use the ILS to runway 9 instead since the winds are pretty low. It's a lot more complicated to know when and how to descend in the approach phase for the localizer and the RNAV approaches, so for those first few tries, make sure you use an ILS. Next, I've got to choose the star or arrival procedure that I'm going to be using, and we saw this in Simbrief when we were planning the flight. It's why we chose a route that had an arrival listed, because it makes this part of programming the MCDU a lot simpler. We saw in that flight plan we're going to be flying the Barrett 5 arrival, so I just have to click on Barrett 5. With that done, it's going to come up with a screen where I need to pick which initial approach fix or via that I'm going to be using for my approach. I'm going to leave this to no vias because you don't really need to select something and the approach is still going to work out fine. And I'm going to do the same thing for the transition just like we did for the departure. I'm going to pick none. With all my selections done, all I've got to do now is press the insert button. My flight plan looks good at this point. I've got the whole thing programmed and ready to go and I can walk through it all and it all looks like it makes sense. So the next thing to do just before we get ready is to check the RADNAV page. For your first flights, I don't think you actually have to spend any time at all on this page. This is where you would input any VOR frequencies that you want to see on the multifunction display on top of the ones that are already in your flight plan, but it's completely optional. All right, we are almost there. The next step is to go to the init B page, which you get to by pressing the init button and then pressing the right arrow key. The first thing we've got to do is pretty easy. So we've got to load the zero fuel weight and the zero fuel weight center of gravity. And we can do that by just pressing the button right here. It's going to propose us two options and we just accept them by pressing the same button again. As you can probably guess, this is the weight of the airplane without any fuel, but with everything else on board. And it's going to be used by the MCDU to do some calculations for all sorts of stuff. Next, it's time to set the fuel. And the first thing I actually do for this is go to the EFB and I'm going to go to the OFP and I'm going to check what it says for the block fuel that we need for this flight. You can see the number right here, 3,742. And that's how much fuel in kilograms we need to have on the airplane to complete the flight. What I do with that number is I first go to the fuel page and I'm going to tell it to refuel the airplane with 3,742 kilograms and I'm going to press the start button for it to refuel the airplane. Then with that done, I go back to the MCDU and I'm going to hit the fuel planning button right here to see what it proposes. When you click that button, what happens is the MCDU is calculating how much fuel it thinks you're going to need for the flight, and it's going to show you the number right above right here, and this is thousands of kilograms. So 2.7 is really 2,700 kilograms. 
Now you're going to notice this number is pretty different from what we had on our flight plan. And you have to basically make a choice at this point. When the number on the flight plan is bigger than what's in the block fuel that's proposed by the MCDU, you actually use the number from the flight plan instead. So in this case, it was 3,742. So what I'm actually going to input is 3.7, which we've now see at the bottom of the scratch pad. And I'm going to load that into the block fuel instead. If the airplane is suggesting more fuel than what's been proposed on the flight plan from Simbrief, you should definitely use the number that it's telling you to. And you should go back to the EFB and reload the amount of fuel that it's telling you in the MCDU. Finally, we've reached the last page that we need to look at, the perf page. Almost all takeoffs in the A320 are done with flaps at the first position. So the first thing I'm going to input right here is the flap level, which is going to be one. And I'm just going to load that right here. With that done, all I've got to do is press the V1, VR, and V2 buttons twice each. The first time it's going to propose me a number down at the bottom, and then I click it a second time to load it, and I just do the same thing for all three of them. As you can probably guess, that's the V1 speed, which is the speed at which we can still stop on the runway. VR is the speed at which we're going to rotate, and V2 is the speed that we can continue flying even if we were to lose one engine. With that done, we are pretty much ready to roll and I already got the call from the cabin crew saying that boarding's completed. So at this point, I am ready to do final checks, do a pushback and taxi to the runway. That's unfortunately going to be in the next video because I've already covered a ton of content in this one already. If you have any questions or comments or things you'd like clarified or things you didn't understand, please feel free to put them in the comments. I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, if you did get some value, please make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to get more Microsoft Flight Sim content. I'll see you in the next video.